All right. Hello, everybody. Good day to you. My name is Janelle Mills, and I will be your presenter. And today I'm going to be presenting on writing learning objectives using the ABCD model. So let's get right into it. Before we can start teaching, the first thing we need to have is our objectives. These are what will guide our lesson and keep track of what was done throughout the lesson. So we need to first understand what a learning objective is. So a learning objective is a statement of what students will be able to do after giving in an instruction. So for example, at the end of the lesson, students will be able to count from one to 10 after playing a number, a number game, sorry. So as you can see, it says they should be able to do something after giving an instruction. So here the students will count fluently from one to 10 after playing a number game. So in writing objectives, we need to make sure that our objectives are SMART. And of course, SMART stands for S for specific, M measurable, A achievable, R relevant, and T time bound. When we speak to objectives being specific, it must, it must be straightforward, right? The students must understand what they're doing and other persons must be able to look at your plan and understand that, hey, this is what will be covered today. So like the example I gave before, students should be able to count from one to 10 after playing a number game. So if you wrote that students should be able to count, count how, count by twos, count by three, count from where to where, where's the starting point, where's the end point, right? So it needs to be specific. In terms of objectives being measurable, uh, throughout the lesson, there the objective must be able to be assessed, meaning how do you know that the students are able to count from one to ten? They must be they must do so fluently, right? So they must provide some sort of evaluation method for that objective. A the, the objective must be achievable. Achievable, let's not set up our students to fail. You know the type of learners you have, you need to structure your lessons around their needs, right? So you don't want to have an objective where you know the students can't perform, up that, can't perform at that level. You need to break it down and make sure that it's aligned with their learning needs and the level at which they learn. Are relevant, the objective must be relevant. relevant. You cannot be teaching mathematics and then you are gone in say a deep science objective where it's really and truly not relevant. It cannot be linked to that aspect of mathematics. So I want to make sure that the objective is focused and it's relevant to the topic that you're teaching. Time bound, every lesson has a duration. For example, you have a 45 minutes lesson. You don't want to have, let's say six long objectives that the students may not be able to cover in that one class. If, it's, that's, a, if that's the case, then you probably need to break those objectives into two sets. You teach one set today and teach one set tomorrow. So let's look at the type of objectives now. So according to Bloom Taxonomy, learning objectives can be divided into three domains. We have the cognitive, the affective, and the psychomotor. So when we talk about cognitive, we need to talk about the thinking process, anything that have it, anything having to do with knowledge. That's what cognitive is all about, to get the children to think. Affective, this is where you want students to develop, develop a specific feeling, attitude, or emotion in third lesson. And psychomotor, this has to do with anything the students use their hand to do. They need to manipulate things, feel, touch, using their hands. So they develop their fine motor skills. So writing objectives, they ensure that your objectives are good objectives, it must have cognitive, affective, and it must target the psychomotor domain. So let's look at some cognitive verb, and this is from Bloom's taxonomy. So this is a range from one to six, from the basic level to a deeper level of understanding. This is how you know that your lesson is progressing. So you don't want to have objectives that only target um, target level one, which is knowledge, such as 
identify, define, describe, recognize self. Those are lower order objectives. So we need to use other objectives across this scope to ensure that our lesson is progressive. So in understanding, students need to summarize, interpret, compare, and contrast. At level three, which is the apply level, what do they use this new knowledge to do? They need to apply it to solve something, to change something, right? And analyze, they need to, again, they need to connect. So you give them something to analyze and they need to connect it with maybe something that's related or something in real life. Evaluate, this is where the students critique. So, you know, higher order thinking is coming here. They're not just telling you something that they have learned, but this is of their own word, their own knowledge, their own thinking, their own understanding that they're doing here and create. This is this actually targets the fine motor skills. So this is where they use that newly found knowledge to do something. They need to design something. They need to replay, role play something. Sorry, they need to modify, you give them something and they make it better. So you know that learning is taking place. In terms of the affective verbs, right? So they have the different affective levels. And if you wish to pause here, you can to better understand what's going on and you can read here. So affective level have receiving, responding, following, organizing, and characterizing by value. So in receiving, right, the students become aware of an emotion. They need to accept, for example, at Cape level sociology, they need to accept the fact that deviance is needed. This could be a uh, I'm giving an example of an objective. Accept the fact that deviance is necessary for a proper functioning of society. Oh, but too much can lead to chaos, right? So at the end of the lesson, the student should be able to accept that, hey, no, the world is not perfect and we need some amount of deviance for, for example, our corporal system to function. The police need something to do. The soldiers need something to do. But too much can lead to catastrophe. Responding, they need to discuss something. Usually it's together to foster that collaborative nature. Value, they need to justify something or share something with one another, with a teacher, anything. Organize, they need to integrate, display, and characterizing, they need to practice or perform something. So these are some effective verbs that you can use in your objective. In the psychomotor, of course, the as I said before, these are establishing fine motor skills. So here the students are building something. They are doing something with their hands. They are replicating something done by the teacher. They are trying to solve things using what they are learning. Come up with coming up, sorry, with formula stuff like that. This is what happened at the psychomotor stage, and these are some psychomotor verbs that can help you to write your objectives. This is what we refer to as a DOK wheel. It's the call it depth. DOK stands for depth of knowledge. So this is how you can know if your lesson is progressing. So this stems from lesson level one, sorry, to level four. And if you realize in each level that we actually use different verbs, all right? So if you need help writing objectives, you can just pull up the DO, the depth of knowledge, the OK levels, and you look at, all right, level one is state, tell, recognize, use, name, measure, simple things like this that students should be able to do. But you don't want to keep them there. They need to go on to level two. So they need to compare, contrast, or predict something. They need to differentiate between something. And you don't stop there. You move them on to level three, where they need to critique something, maybe give them a case study. And level four, they make something, they connect to something deeper, they create something, they prove something, right? So this is how you know that your lesson is progressing from levels one through to level four by using these verbs. It tells whosoever is looking at your lesson plan that, hey, the lesson is snowballing. It's not just at one, at one level. It's snowballing students. Uh, they achieve the first objective and are able to go on to the next. And it takes them from one stage to another and it, from simple to complex. So in making sure your objectives are smart, 
right? We use the ABCD model of writing objective. A for audience, B for behavior, C condition, D degree, A, B, C, D. So audience, this is who will be doing the behavior, which is usually the students. The behavior is the performance. What should the lear learner be able to do, right? And this thing in behavior, you can, you know, just to get your objective, well written, what you can do, behavior is usually the verb. We just looked at the DOK levels. So the behavior would be to tell, to recall, to design, right? To critique. So the behavior is usually the verb. Keep that in mind. So condition, under what condition or under what circumstance must the learner demonstrate their mastery of the objective? This refers to what learning materials will you use, will you give the children to use to demonstrate their learning. So if we remember well from my first objective, students should be able to come from one to 10 after playing a, after playing a counting game. So counting game, this is the strategy, this is the learning material that the students must use in order to learn how to count. When we speak about degree, we speak about the criteria, right? So how well must the behavior must be executed to know that learning has taken place? So in terms of degree, it can be speed. So students should quickly do something. Quantity, how much, right? So it doesn't, you can give them, for example, five things, right? You can give them five things, but the accuracy, the degree, the quantity to know that learning have, to, have taken place could be three. So it could be to discuss at least three reasons why humans need plants, right? So instead of saying all five, right? To, to know that the objective have been achieved, they must do at least three. And in terms of accuracy, how well, whether 100% accuracy, if it's a, it's a level one objective, usually the accuracy can be 100%, but as it gets more complex, it can bring it up down to about, say, 75%. And you can also design another instrument to know that, hey, this was 75% accuracy or the students achieve 80% accuracy right here. So remember, A, B, C, D, audience, which is usually students' behavior, performance, this is usually the verb, the condition, this is what you give them to work with in order to grasp the concept, the learning materials, and degree, which is the criteria, how well should they do this or execute this objective. So let's look at a few examples. So I'm still continuing my objective that I had in the beginning, which was to come from one to 10, right? So objectives at the end of the lesson, students will be able to, students is my audience. So that's my A from my ABC objective. Identify, right? Identify, which is my behavior that is the verb. Right, so identify counting number. That's what they should be able to do it. How, how, what level of degree, right? At least five. So they should be able to identify at least five counting numbers after viewing the number card. So that's the condition under which they will be working on. Them. So after viewing number cards, they should be able to identify at least five counting numbers. And this is a DOK one objective, right? So it's a fairly, it's a fairly easy objective and it's cognitive because it is targeting cognitive still thinking, right? So objective number two, show, which is my behavior, that's the verb, show how to write counting numbers by tracing three numbers of their choice with 70% accuracy so this is a dok level two objective where they need to show something right so we have our verb which is our behavior which is to show and this objective actually targets the psychomotor since the students will be using their hands to do something right it helps develop their fine motor skills so this is how this objective is a psychomotor objective and the accuracy is 70 percent accuracy how do you know that students have achieved 70% accuracy? 
well, as I said before, you will have to design an instrument to know, say, all right, maybe if they break away five times while tracing, then that would give them 70% accuracy, right? And then <clears throat> I have three objectives. So number three is to practice counting from one to 10 collaborate, collaboratively in pairs, right? So since they're going to be working together to do something, this is going to be bringing out the effective domain, right? They need to work together as a team. And this is at a DOK level three verb here, which is the behavior is practice, right? And what is the, the degree? How well should they do, do this? So it's from one to 10. So it should be specific, right? So if you need for larger classes, maybe it could be from 20 to 50 or maybe even to 100. But here, make sure that it's specific. They're counting, practice counting from one to 10. So I do hope everybody have learned something from this. All right, so I hope this really helped for you to better understand how to structure your objectives. So remember, recapping objectives should be smart. Objectives should target all three domains. So the cognitive, the affective, and the psychomotor, right? And the learning objective should be progressive. You take the students from step one through to step five, if you have that amount of objective. So it should not, it takes them from a simple to a more complex. So learning is constructed. And, and you want to make sure to use your A, B, C, D model to keep your objective smart. That is audience behavior, condition, and degree. Thank you.